If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. And if you need any code cards, make sure you check out Potown Store for automatic email delivery and use code TABLEMONTH for 5% off all your purchases. Alright, sorry about that. Um, welcome back guys, I guess we'll start from the top. Welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TCG World 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. I know you guys have been... Um, I guess there's not that much interest in seeing the the meta decks like Mewtwo, like Regisard, like Plants, um, Pigram. So I decided today would be a good day to explore some of the less... Um, the less uh, represented and less known decks such as BEM. Yeah. Um, El Tortuga Gigante, <laughs> thank you so much for the follow. The washing machine, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, that was that was my prize from winning Sao Paulo Regionals. That was that was what I spent the money on. <laughs> um, yeah, being an adult is weird. Anyways, uh, we have BHM. Mysterious Noise deals 90 damage, nothing too special for 3 energies, and you shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. <coughs> so pretty annoying effect. However, your opponent can play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. So no tool cards, no electro powers, no radars, no cherish bolts, no great potions, no mixed herbs, no custom catchers, no beast strings. There are a bunch of really good item cards that you get to prevent. So how on earth are we going to get BEM out every single turn? Well, we're going to be using the Pejoro experience, yeah. Airmail ability allows you to look at the top two cards, you keep one, and then the other goes to the bottom of your deck. So we're trying to thin the deck as much as possible. Um, the fact that Pejoro has 60 HP is really, really good because um, you can continually Elms, uh, Professor Elms lecture for the PGs and the Pejoros to set up. So it's a great way to thin the deck, but also start uh, your draw engine. You have the Ditto Prism to evolve into any of our stage ones. And once we shuffle the BHM into a deck, we need to promote something, right? So we're gonna try and promote Alola Ninetales with the Luminous Barrier ability to prevent um, to prevent our opponent's GX from damaging us at all. And we are also going to be promoting Gumi so that our opponent's active uh, Pokemon's attacks cost one colorless more. They both have a one retreat cost, so that's where the U-turn board is going to be very nice to reduce that to zero and a free retreat so that we can continue the BEM loop. And then supporters wise, we have the four Professor Elms lecture for Cynthia, two Lily, two Tate and Lysa for the switching effect and also for shuffle draw and the one of Copycat. As we are going to prevent the use of items, um, our opponent's hands should start accumulating pretty, pretty highly and therefore the Copycat could be pretty good. Now we also have Blizzard Town, where Pokemon with 40 HP or less remaining um, can't attack, so that's a way to attempt uh, preventing um, Kiratina from running you over, though this still should have a very bad Malamar matchup. And we have a Shrine of Punishment for that little bit of extra damage. Um, Skateboard no sería mejor necesariamente porque um, con esto ya es algo infinito, ¿no? Mientras juegas una, las vas recuperando y recuperando y recuperando. And then finally we have um, four Pokecom to set up, along with the treasures to search for the pieces. We have four Acrobikes to thin, and the one of Resist Stamp. Um, along with our four Triple Acceleration Energy, of course. So let's jump into the ladder and see what we can do with this BHM deck. I believe I lost one yesterday, right? Um, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> Let me catch up on chats. Pablo's clothes about to be extra clean now. Yes, but they were clean before. <laughs> uh, new expansion is coming tomorrow. What expansion rotates out? Um, the, the rotation already happened. Yeah, it happened right before Worlds. The new set that's coming out um, is Hidden Fates. Yeah, Hidden Fates is coming out. Um, so we're, we're about to be able to bling out our decks even more with our shiny Pokemon. I am doing well, Joe, 100, thank you so much. How about yourself? Um, you, you hope top four at your League Cup gets a washing machine each. <laughs> I mean, don't hold your breath for that. Uh, okay, pretty, 
pretty solid start. If we were going first, this would be an incredibly busted hand. Um, okay, pretty solid. Uh, we might lose a, an, an LGM turn one, not the biggest of deals. Well, probably less so now that there's a like Giratina active. Unfortunately, though, as I mentioned, Malamar is a pretty bad matchup. Um, because of the. Well, I guess we can prevent the spell tax, and that helps. Um, the Blizzard Town should be pretty key. Yeah. Um, do you know why the list on the middle list is missing Seal Valley GX? Because they played a different. Um, a different version of the deck, I believe. Um, day one, they had Silvali, and then day two, they had. Um, day two, they had uh, no Silvali, I believe. So that would be why. Okay, so we are. We have a pretty sick looking setup right here. And my opponent got nothing, so we might just win this based off of Malamar's um, bad draws. Uh, so yeah, Blizzard Town precisely because you hit the Giratina for 90, right? And then it has 40 HP left and therefore it can't attack. So you might be able to prevent an, a KO there. Uh, we do get judged. I definitely don't agree with Judge in the most inconsistent deck in the format, probably, arguably. Um, decent set of cards. Uh, we're not getting anywhere closer. Well, now we are. Yeah. Now we just need to find a triple. Now we just need to find one of our four triple acceleration energies and we're gonna be in a fantastic spot. So, I feel like I'm just gonna read and force away the reset stamp. I'm not gonna play it and I don't want to redraw it. And now we need one of our triples off of these five cards. There we go, perfect. And we got a Gumi and an escape board. So we literally could not have asked for a, and a follow-up supporter. We literally could not have asked for a better hand. We might just outright win here. We generally might just outright win. And Bino Crater, thank you so much. Nine months of subscription. Thank you so much. This Gumi will even stop Giratina from attacking. So I think we're about to win our first game here. And Bino Crater, thank you so, so much. Sir Bandage, thanks so much for being here. Uh, okay. So now we just need to find a triple and a BHM. Triple and BHM. Triple and BHM. That's all we need. Triple and BHM. Uh, we do find the BHM. Right? We do find the BHM. I'll put the nine tails back. We do find the BHM. Maybe I should have acrobiked first. Well, not necessarily. Okay. So I shall acrobat. There we go. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> that is amazingly lucky. And there's a victory. So 104 BHM. Feels like forever. <laughs> yeah, I know, Jedi. It's been a while, but I was live yesterday. I'm live today. And if everything goes to plan, I will be live tomorrow, and Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and so on, and so forth. Um, oh yeah, and my opponent couldn't even attack because of the Blizzard Town, right? Um, is it a wash Rotom themed washing machine? <laughs> Not quite. Um, uh, Turbo Darkness, what the meta for Leak Ups are? I mean, it depends on... Um, on your area really right it really depends on where you are from um yeah pretty solid pretty solid okay so we're gonna start with our vulpix i feel like the roar vulpix might be better we have turn one elms which is the dream right Turn one elms is the dream. And we did all of that the, the previous game without Picciotto, which is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Okay, okay. So we see resetting whole more shadow. So this seems to be a non-GX deck versus a non-GX deck where we should be able to have an advantage. Um, I'm surprised my opponent went straight up for the Wolfet. I mean, that does mean no Ditto Prism, but I'm fine with that, I feel. Oh, the Mad Turbo Darkness. I thought you meant the meta. The Mad is the the Mewtwo and Mew art. 
Yeah, the Mew and Mewtwo Tag Team art. That is the art for the new Lee Cops. Yeah. Ah, okay, Jedi. Well, hopefully you'll be seeing me live a lot, a lot more. Yeah. Okay, so we're definitely using this guy in turn one. For two LGM and a PG. I think that seems solid. Uh, we're gonna lose the Vulpix, not a big deal. I don't know what stadium my opponent is playing, so I might want to keep this for now. Um, because, like, if, it, if it's something that benefits him, I want to counter it, right? Not that the shrine hurts or helps us, it's just I would really like to um, to have that as a counter pick in case my opponent has something that benefits him. So, multiple frost last for my opponent. There is a Brilliant Forest, see, so keeping the stadium as a stadium was a good call. Yeah. Um, rail, I do have a ton of mats lying, well, I do have a ton of mats lying around. A store down here currently has them, and they sell them for me, um, and I give them a little commission, right? Uh, why would you do maximum damage, though? That makes no sense. Um, and I have one that I prefer to use, yes. I... I prefer to use the one um, that I used to win uh, the 2016 National Championships. Yeah, that's the one I end up uh, always favoring. Okay, so we shall Cynthia here. And we are not able to find a uh, triple. So let's go ahead and airmail. Not quite, although the U-turn board is useful so that we sacrifice something else like the Vulpix or the Ditto even. Because Ditto is going to be useless, right? Less useful than um, than the Vulpix, arguably. And then I should bench this guy. I should evolve this guy as well. And then I feel like I should just bench the Vulpix. Okay, so not the best hand, but we do have the next three cards to get out of this situation. And if Broslas decides to... Oh no, he can kill... Oh... That's why I shouldn't have given up on the Ditto, because he can Icy Wind for the KO on the Ditto. So we're going to have to rely on the item lock being enough to stop my opponent from finding back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back attackers and whiffing that way. Yeah, yeah the Secret Art of Shrine of Punishment is going to be cool to have for sure. Um, Lusamine is not banned. It's only an expanded, yeah. Uh, there, there isn't a mat for Ember and Darkrai that we know of yet, but it might be one of the mats for regionals, right? Like the art is, what, Darkrai, Ember, Mew to Mew, Garchomp, Giratina, and something else for the booster packs. So Darkrai, Ember, might be a regionals mat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, real, I have a, way too many mats lying around for sure. <laughs> way too many. Okay, reset stamp, not very useful. Airmail, okay. Get a Tain Eliza, not bad. Not bad. Um, do I want to get rid of the Reset Stamp? I don't think so. Reset Stamp will eventually be useful. Sableye, Titar, yeah. SP on the Oculus. I, I'm not sure. I am actually not sure. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. Yeah, things are actually looking pretty good. So, after I take this KO... I'm gonna need a U-turn board, right? So I might as well put one back in so I have a higher chance of finding one. So a mysterious noise, get the KO, and then promote the Vulpix? Does Pijero have free retreat? No, it does not. So the Vulpix it is. The Vulpix it is. We get a price card, a BHM, not too great. Uh, but the Elms gets me the two Pichotos and an LGM, and then I get to look at the next six cards for a um, escape board U-turn board rather so yeah <laughs> do you keep any mats or cards because they are special to you I do yeah I do I keep any any mat that I made like any extra mat that I got for winning something or making top eight those I keep um, and um, like what I'm trying to do right now is for example, my 
2016 Greninja Break uh, National Champion deck. I am uh, trying to build that deck like full holo, yeah, full foil, um, so that I can um, just keep it as a memento, yeah. Um, so all the cards that I like, that I do well with, or that I enjoy using, um, rather that I've done well with, I definitely keep the mats, I definitely keep the trophies, and um, I am. Um, I I keep the mats, I keep the trophies, and the decks, like, I'm trying to to build them by blinging them out and stuff. Okay, so my opponent has not been, has not been using his stadium, so that's good. I'm gonna counter it, yeah. So the Lily goes to the bottom, then I'll airmail, I'll grab the Poke Gear, that seems solid. And then I will go ahead and airmail. Okay, so we won't get an attack of this turn. Not the biggest of deals, but also not ideal, of course. And I will pass. Yeah, next turn, I will commit fully to find it that um, U-turn board. Sorry, not a skateboard, U-turn board. Okay, so my opponent plays down a switch. He can't play item guards now. Uh, this is not that big a deal. I feel like the item lock will be will apply a lot of pressure to my opponent. Reset time from six to five. Not the biggest of deals. That seems like a really bad card for my opponent to find and definitely play, although it does, like if he's gonna get item locked then might as well. Now we have the U-turn board, so now we are looking for the triple, right? Now we are looking for the triple, so now it's deck thinning time as much as I can, right? So definitely gonna be playing this, definitely gonna be playing this, playing this, um, evolving, and then synthing, and then air mailing. That way I see 12 different unique cards. Marshadow, not a big deal. That's a Pokemon he's gonna give up on, which I'm surprised, but understandably so. Um, I would love to have a Gumi in the active rather than the Vulpix. Okay, so I'll evolve and then I will Akrom, keeping. I feel like the Cynthia is more reliable than the Copycat at this point. And then I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, putting that back. For a nine tails, so I can continue to thin uh, my deck as much as possible. So U-turn board, and then Cynthia, and then Cynthia into a triple Axel. I do. So now all we're looking for is just extra pieces of things, right? So just now it's just thinning time here. Now it's just maximum thinning time, the triple for next turn, that's great. Um, finding an LGM for next turn is also pretty important. Uh, we'll keep the Gumi, sure. And then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Pokecom the Gumi for an LGM. And we basically have everything we need at this point. And we can't get reset stamped, which is also pretty important. We can't get judged, but we can't get reset stamped anymore. We have at least two turns, right? We're taking at least the next two prizes, and we should be able to win in within the next five turns, right? I'll promote this guy because they have free retreat. Um, if that were a Gumi, it would be even better because it would reduce highly the chance of my opponent attacking, but I think we're good, yeah? I think we are good. What other decks do I have planned for today? Um, I have, I, so I had this, I have Chandler, yeah, and and then I have either Alola Next style or Keldeo style, maybe even both, yeah, one of those. Um, it could also be Fossils, if, depending on how much time we have, um, could be Fossils, so, but next deck is definitely going to be Chandler, and there's a victory, yeah, we, we got the loop. We were in a situation where we had the infinite loop right there. So yeah, we am looking actually pretty strong. Honestly, pretty strong. Uh, you pulled a full art Cynthia online, Jedi. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Max Rock, I still like to on my cargo. No estoy muy de acuerdo. Sería otra línea. No puedes buscarle Slokma con Professor Elms. No estoy tan de acuerdo. Porque llega un punto en que ya hiciste tan chico el deck que eh, no necesitas ese tipo de cartas. Ok, so we don't know what we're up against. I do have the U-turn board. So I feel like Kumi is nice, but Ninetales can be game-changing. So that's why I'm starting the Kumi. Yeah, because if Kumi gets KO'd, 
than fair. But Ninetales can just completely wall off some decks. Yeah, especially without Kuzma. Uh, if this is an Arcanine based deck though, then Gumi is going to be more impactful for sure. But the thing is, we don't know, right? We don't actually know. So, could be Reshi's Arc with Arcanine. So, what do I discard? I can bench the Vulpix, or I could get rid... It, it's between the Vulpix or this guy. Could be... There's an argument for the Behe, I'm honestly. Uh, there's an argument for the Behe, I'm. But we don't know how many are prized either. So I'm going to get rid of the Reset Stamp. Uh, no BHMs were prized. No Pichotos prized. Um, so yeah, we won't be able to Reset Stamp. I'm hoping that won't come into play, but we don't know. Yeah, that we definitely do not know if that will come into play or not. So we get to Lily here on turn one. Pretty nice. Um, looking pretty good so far. Right? Looking pretty good so far. Okay, since I know I have the four BHMs now, I'm going to keep the Cynthia because if I fail the Poke Gear, then I could be in trouble. I mean, I'm, I'm not about risking that. And then I'll go ahead and play this here as well. And then we'll pass. And it's looking pretty good. It is actually looking pretty good. I will eventually play Poipol style as well. Um, si rompe papo, lo, lo jugaré as well, eh, también. <laughs> um... You wish you could have sold some of your Dark Ride Prisms at Worlds, but there were no vendors because you have 30 of them. Wow. 30. That's a, that's a good... <clears throat> that's a good return of investment, Turbo Darkness. I'm sure you'll be able to add regionals, though. Okay, so we see Victini, we see the Dene. So Salazzle. This is definitely the Arcanine deck uh, from the open. <laughs> okay, so my opponent decided to Welder to the active, which going second I don't particularly agree with because he's not even getting a KO on the Kumi. Um, but I guess he didn't have anything better to to power up. Um, we don't know if my opponent has Wolf Head, so I feel like I should just evolve the Ditto. Um, this Professor Elms is actually a really, really nice top deck. So I'll grab this guy, this guy, and this guy. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Because then I bench the Pidgey. Well, I evolve the Pidgeotto as well. And then I bench the Pidgey. And then I get airmail. And I will definitely get the Counter Stadium 100%. I don't want to give my opponent heat factory for another turn come on and then attach here and then retreat and then mysterious noise and I've, if my opponent dedicates another welder to deal 10 damage to the gumi i'm gonna call that a win in my book so gumi is gonna be pretty clutch here finding the second gumi might be a good call so yeah Pretty nice, pretty nice. This deck is honestly looking very strong. It is actually looking quite strong at the moment. Okay, so my opponent just attaches and passes. So now it's up to us to find that other... Um, the triple and the BHM. We did get rid of one BHM. There they are. I feel like my opponent might just end up conceding right here. Gonna airmail for this guy. The elms are no longer useful. And then I'll go ahead and do this. Put back this guy. Grab the Pichotto. And then we're gonna evolve. And we're gonna evolve. And we're gonna evolve as well. I mean, there's an argument to keeping that Pokemon in hand for sure. Airmail. Perfect. LGM is another card we're looking for. There was an argument to keeping the Ninetales for Pokecom purposes. They haven't precisely thinned that that well yet, right? But yeah, I fully expect to win this game as well. <laughs> After Poipol rotates? <laughs> Probably not. Thoughts on Aegislash, Slash, since you can constantly recycle your attackers, play Shrine. I mean, it is a stage 2. I think that's the biggest issue. 
um, but it probably has some potential, right? It probably has some potential. Um, okay, since I have the triple already, I kind of like the idea of just air mailing to try to find the BGM. Uh, and that's why I shouldn't have played the LGM immediately. And uh, losing a triple, eh, it is a big deal though. But I feel like I'd rather just dig. Yeah, you have very candy and dust on. That's the thing though. Like that doesn't mean you're gonna find them though. That doesn't mean you're gonna easily find them. Okay, this gives me Pokemon that I can then use to trade for the BGM. So, I mean, so generally, uh, Venomate, like, there's a reason why AG Slash wasn't played at Worlds. Yeah, it might be underrated, but the more likely reason is that it's just not good enough. Yeah, it's like, it's a balanced mechanic. Whereas, um, all the other decks are just completely broken. So, that's the issue. Yeah, that is the issue a lot of these decks end up running into. That they are very well balanced to the point that they can compete with the unbalanced mechanics, you know? Uh, the Shrine damage doesn't matter. And then let's promote the Gumi. No items for my opponent, no Pokecombs, no Acrobikes. Yes to a Thedo, that's fine. No Fiery Flints, no Fire Crystals. Okay, this deck is honestly surprisingly good. I am color me impressed with BGM. Color me impressed with BGM. Like after seeing this play out, I definitely would not look forward to um, playing against it at a tournament. Okay, so this is where we could start whiffing, right? Because we haven't thinned that that well, except we aren't going to whiff, that's fantastic. We need to evolve this guy. I always want to evolve the wrong one, have you noticed? <laughs> I, I keep trying to evolve the wrong one. Okay, so airmail, the Pichoto goes to the bottom. Acro, uh, we'll take the supporter, we already have three escape boards, a uh, U-turn board in play, we don't need another one. Definitely want to keep the triple. Now I have back-to-back -back BEMs. Now I have back-to-back -back BEMs. So essentially, I should be able to win within two turns. Three turns, sorry. This turn I get two prizes, which will also give me BEM pieces, I hope. Am I going to Rowlet Egg today? Uh, I mean, I'm thinking more about doing Keldeo just because it got a little bit more hype. Um, so I might leave Rowlet and Egg for tomorrow. Clash up man, just because I have done a before a um, Rowlet and Egg deck, but I have never done a Keldeo deck, so that might be the deciding factor, yeah? Um, uh, Ainun Chido, uh, thank you. Okay, Keldeo Quag or Keldeo Vaporeon? Uh, neither? <laughs> The Keldeo Bronzong. Yeah. You're interested to see some expanded. Yeah, I know, Rail. I'm honestly looking forward to that as well. Sabin Saitama, thanks so much for the follow. And yeah, guys, I think we're undefeated with BHM. The deck's working out pretty nicely. I hope these games have showed how the deck um, wants to work. Yeah, so that will be all for this video in particular. Um, if you want to... Um, Rather, if you're watching with me on Twitch, don't go anywhere. I will be right back with our next deck, yeah, which will be Chandler, uh, the Chandler that was played in day two of the World Championships. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps the channel. And for everyone, if you're looking to buy some cards, go check out um, TCG Player, follow our link, and just make sure you're checking out following the link. And that's a great way to support the channel. And if you need any codes, make sure you go to Potan Store and use code TAIL1 for 5% off. Don't go anywhere, I will be right 